In this video, we will discuss the module for week 2 and 3 for transfer and uh, business taxation. So, at the end of this video, or after watching this video, you are uh, expected to identify properties to be included in the gross estate. Of course, uh, in computing the estate tax due, you have first to identify the composition of the gross estate less the allowable deduction and then you'll arrive at uh, the net taxable estate. Okay, the value of the net taxable estate will be multiplied by the appropriate uh, estate uh, tax rate. But of course, again, you have to identifies, uh, identify and analyze uh, the composition of the gross estate. So gross estate, it consists of all properties and interest in properties of a decedent at the time of death as well as properties transferred during lifetime only in form but in substance was only transferred at the time of death. So yung gross estate daw, ito yung lahat no, ng properties ng decedent uh, that are not uh, extinguished by reason of his death and uh, all of those transfers only in form okay, but in substance still transferred at the time of death. Although, yung mga properties niya or may mga properties siya na tin-transfer uh, at his, during his lifetime pero in substance it is still transferred at the time of death. So, that is still considered to be gross uh, part of the gross estate. Now, we have to classify first okay, the decedent. The decedent could be a resident or citizen and a non-resident alien. So, of course, if the decedent is a resident, when you say resident, it could be resident citizen or resident alien or citizen. When you say citizen, it could be resident citizen or non-resident citizen or Again, a resident alien. So, the gross estate shall include all properties located within and outside the Philippines. So, lahat ng properties okay, ng decedent, kapag uh, resident siya or citizen, lahat ng property niya within or outside the Philippines will form part of his gross estate. If the decedent naman is a non-resident alien, okay, the gross estate shall include properties located only within the Philippines. So again, if uh, the decedent is hindi siya resident or hindi din siya citizen, which means non-resident alien siya, only those properties located in the Philippines will form part of his or her gross estate. Now let's talk now uh, the composition of the gross estate of a resident citizen, non-resident citizen, and resident alien decedents. The following shall compose his gross estate. First is you have the tangible personal property. So, alam nyo na yon what is a tangible personal property? It is a uh, personal property that can be seen and touched. So, this includes uh, appliances, jewelry, car, and other movable kasi personal yeah, movable property which can be transported from one place to another when you say intangible personal property okay, those properties that that does not have physical characters kasi intangible so those are properties that can be seen and touched because okay, they have no physical form so they cannot be seen and touched because uh, they do not have physical form uh, example okay, are the following okay, bank deposits, bonds, promissory notes, copyright, trademark, mortgages, patent, and licenses are intangible personal property. Now, another one is real or immovable property. So, this now consists of land building or anything attached uh, to, to the soil no, with permanent. Okay? So, that is real or immovable property. Again, example dyan is land building. Ayan. Kasi nga, attached sila sa soil. 
or sa land okay, because they are immovable. Now, there is another one that will uh, form part of the gross estate of a resident or citizen decedent. Okay? You call it, or we call it, taxable transfers. So, taxable transfers, although these transfers are inter vivos, so meaning the transfer of which happens during the lifetime of the decedent, okay? but they are actually mortis causa in substance because they are intended to take effect upon or after the death of the transferor. So kahit na tinransfer uh, yung property na yun during the lifetime or katong uh, buhi pa si decedent, okay? but the substance of which is that uh, the, the transfer or the transfer of the ownership really happens no? or really takes effect after the death na of the transfer. So, ano-ano yun? Okay, we have, we actually have five. Okay, transfer in contemplation of death. Okay, revocable transfers. Transfers under general power of appointment. Proceeds of life insurance with the revocable beneficiary. And transfer for insufficient consideration. So, let's start off with the transfer in contemplation of death. So, these transfers, okay, uh, although it happens again during the lifetime of the decedent, however, because this transfer is motivated by the thought of death, then uh, this transfer will form part of the gross estate of the decedent. So, kumbaga, nag-transfer siya during his lifetime kasi nga, uh, feeling niya or yung decision niya no, to transfer such property is because of the thought of imminent death. Okay. So, still, uh, magiging part siya ng gross estate ni decedent. Again, although it happened during the lifetime of the decedent. It includes disposition of property for the purpose of avoiding tax. Ayan. Kapag nag-avoid si decedent during his lifetime, na-avoid siya ng estate tax, so i-dispose niya during his lifetime para yung babayaran niya is donor's tax. So still, it will form part of his gross estate. Transfer of properties based on their, or the following grounds are not considered as contemplation of death. So, except uh, this, uh, except those transfers na motivated by the thought of death, okay, this uh, following ano, transfers from A to G, okay, they, these are not transfers in contemplation of death. Thus, hindi ito magpo-form part sa gross estate ni decedent. Ito, from A to G. Now, revocable transfers naman, ito yung transfer na uh, the, the terms may be changed, okay? amended, revoked, or terminated by the decedent. Although, na-transfer yung possession. So, ang uh, thought kasi ng revocable transfer is that there is a transfer of possession but not the ownership. Kumbaga, yung saan, uh, sino ba nagpo-possess ng property? So, kumbaga, tinransfer lang niya yung presence or yung possession ng property but not the absolute ownership. Therefore, anytime no, the decedent during his lifetime can change, amend, or revoke, no, or terminate uh, the, the transfer of such position. So, pwede niya ku, uh, kunin sa transferi okay, yung tinransfer niya during his lifetime. So, that is revocable transfers. If the decedent okay, or upon the death no, of the decedent, if those properties considered to be revocably transferred during his lifetime would still form part of the gross uh, estate of that or of such decedent. It includes a transfer which allows the transferor to continue enjoying, possessing, or controlling the property. Now, transfers under general power of appointment. Okay, so we have two types of power of appointment. Ayan. So, una, we have special power of appointment and the general power of appointment. So, a power of appointment is a right to designate by will or deed executed in contemplation of death or uh, after death. So, a power of appointment may either be, so, yun yung sinabi ko kanina, general or special. The other term for special is limited. 
A special power of appointment authorizes the holder of the power to appoint only among a restricted or designated class of persons other than uh, him or her. Yeah. So, yung special power of appointment, ito yung si original owner, tinransfer niya kay transferee. Tapos, sabi ni original owner kay transferee, nagbigay mo yan to these people, only to these people. Ayan. So, kumbaga, uh, the decedent or the transferee will transfer such property from the original uh, owner to the we or to the will or no or to the wishes or to the list of particular or specific persons okay? na pwede lang niya i-transfer yung property from the original uh, owner okay? so kapag namatay na si transferee okay? uh, hindi yon magfo-form part ng kanyang gross estate because the power of appointment is that of a special or limited so kumbaga wala siyang freedom si decedent to transfer such property to anyone he wants. Kasi nga, limited lang yung power niya. So, it will not form, or the property it will not form part of the gross estate of the decedent. A general power of appointment naman, it means that the decedent must have the power to exercise in favor of him or herself ayan, or his or her estate or the creditors of his or her estate. So, when you say general power of appointment naman, pagka-transfer ni owner sa present decedent, pagka-transfer niya, uh, sasabihin, or the terms of the transfer would be uh, allowing no the transferee to transfer the said property to anyone he wants. Ayan. So, kumbaga, may freedom si transferee to give or to transfer the property from the original owner. So in that, if such is the case, ang tawag doon is a general power of appointment. Okay? Upon the death no, of the transferee, okay, such property will form part of his gross estate. Kaya only those transfers under general power of appointment uh, will form part of the gross estate of the transferee. Okay? Upon his death. Now, proceeds of life insurance with the revocable beneficiary. So, there are two uh, beneficiaries or two classes of beneficiaries okay, for a life insurance policy. So, dalawa siya. So, una, ito yung third person. So, sino ba yung third person? Or pwede siya wife, child, or other person okay, as the beneficiary of the life insurance. So, uh, Upon the death of the decedent, no, yung proceeds ng life insurance kapag napunta kay wife, kay child, or kay third person. Okay, there are two conditions in order for the proceeds, no, kasi pera yon. in order for the proceeds to, for, to be formed part of its or the decedent's gross estate. Kapag yung terms ng life insurance policy is revocable, okay, so meaning upon the or during the lifetime of the decedent, uh, si si decedent class, siya yung nagkuha ng life insurance policy. So upon his death, it will uh, go to either the wife, the child, or other third person. So kapag revocable siya, okay, it will form part of the gross estate of the decedent upon his death. So for example, nagkuha siya ng life insurance policy, tapos yung beneficiary is the wife, the child, or the third person, pero yung ginawa niya is revocable yung insurance uh, life insurance policy. So, upon his death, kasi revocable yon so yung proceeds will form part of the gross estate of the decedent. Kapag revocable naman, so meaning, uh, upon uh, pagkuha no, or pagkakuha ni uh, decedent no, uh, during his lifetime ng life insurance policy, and the beneficiaries are the wife, or the children, or a third person. Tapos, irrevocable siya. Okay? So, upon his death, the proceeds will no longer be a part of his gross estate. Kasi irrevocable. Now, kapag yung beneficiary naman is other than the wife, the child, or the other third person. So, kapag yung beneficiary again is the estate, or the estate of the decedent, or his executor or administrator, regardless of uh, revocable or not, 
okay? the proceeds will form part of his gross estate. So, example, kapag si decedent nagkuha siya ng life insurance policy that upon his death, yung life insurance policy or yung proceeds ng life insurance policy will go to the estate or to his executor or to his administrator. Kahit na revocable yan or irrevocable pa yan, it will always still or it will always form part of that decedent's gross estate. Now, transfer for insufficient consideration. So, during the lifetime of the uh, decedent, okay, uh, when that decedent is still alive, okay, pwede siya mag-transfer ng uh, property to another person. Okay? Pero, with consideration. Okay? When you say with consideration, may bayad yun. Kung baga, uh, pinakita lang nila na or they, they just make it appear that it is that of a sale. Pero the consideration or yung na-receive niya na bayad ni, ni decedent during his lifetime is less than the fair market value of the property transferred. For example, si decedent during his lifetime, meron siyang land. Okay? Be, uh, the fair market value of the land is 1.5 million. Pero, binenta lang niya for, let's say, uh, 750,000. Kumbaga, 50% only yung binayad or yung na-receive niya for the transaction. So, that is considered to be a transfer for insufficient consideration. So, the difference between the fair market value, which is 1.5 million, and the consideration received by the decedent during his lifetime, which is 750,000, that's 1.5 million minus 750,000 is equal to 750,000. Kung baga, yung difference nila will be added to the gross estate of the uh, decedent or will form part of the gross estate of the decedent. Now, what if uh, those are the rules no? Uh, or those are the properties and transfers that will form part of the gross estate of the uh, resident or citizen decedent. Now, let's talk about if the decedent is a non-resident alien. Okay? So, if the decedent okay, was a non-resident alien, only his property situated in the Philippines shall uh, form part of his gross estate. So, those property lang daw situated in the Philippines or na nasa Pilipinas shall form part of his gross estate. His gross estate shall include the following. So, ito, ito yung uh, uh, magpo-form part ng gross estate ni decedent. Ano-ano yun? So, ito yung mga uh, what is listed here are intangible properties or intangible personal property within the Philippines. Kasi nga, again, only the properties within the Philippines shall form part of the gross estate of a decedent if that decedent is a non-resident alien. So, ito yon yung mga intangible properties. Okay? Franchise, which must be exercisable in the Philippines. So, dapat yung franchise exercisable in the Philippines. Shares, obligations, or bonds issued by domestic corporations. So, for example, si ABS, uh, mer si decedent meron siyang ownership ng share sa ABS-CBN. And ABS-CBN is a domestic corporation. Therefore, uh, that such shares is considered to be within the Philippines or situated in the Philippines. Shares, obligations, or bonds issued by any foreign corporation. 85% of business of which is in the Philippines. So, kahit na yung nag-issue ng shares ng bonds is foreign corporation, pero yung 85% of their business is within the Philippines, still, uh, the shares is considered to be, or the situs of the shares is still considered to be uh, within the Philippines. Shares, obligations, or bonds no issued by any foreign corporation, if such shares, uh, obligations, or bonds have acquired business situs in the Philippines. So, kahit na yung shares or bonds, again, in-issue siya ng foreign corporation, pero yung shares and obligations or bonds ay nakapag-acquire na siya ng business status in the Philippines. Still, such shares, obligations, or bonds okay, are considered to be within the Philippines. And, Shares or rights in any partnership, business, or industry established in the Philippines. So, kapag partner siya sa isang partnership business sa Philippines, okay, or any business na meron siyang right or interest, okay, such right or interest uh, is considered to be within the Philippines. 
Okay? So, ito again, ito yung mga intangible personal property na considered to be within the Philippines. Therefore, a part of the gross estate of a non-resident alien descendant. Now, the inclusion of intangible personal property located in the Philippines in the gross estate of a non-resident alien descendant is subject to a reciprocity rule. Such intangible personal property shall not be included in the gross estate in the following cases. So again, yung intangible personal property ni non-resident alien Okay. Yung pagiging parts niya ng gross estate or yung pagiging part ng mga intangible personal property sa gross estate ni non-resident alien decedent still okay, depending on the reciprocity rule. Kapag nag-a-apply ba si reciprocity rule. So again, what do you mean by reciprocity rule? Okay. Ito yung uh, if the decedent at the time of his death was a resident of a foreign country which at the time of death did not impose a transfer tax or death of any character in respect of intangible personal property of citizens of the Philippines not residing in that foreign country. So kapag yung a home country ni non-resident alien, for example, taga-Australia si non-resident alien, taga-Australia siya, tapos yung Australian government hindi siya nagpapataw ng estate tax sa mga Philippine residents na uh, may property sa may intangible personal property sa Australia. So, ganun din yung gagawin ni Philippine government. Kumbaga, uh, that that is the reciprocity rule. So, kumbaga reciprocal yung uh, rule, no, na binab, uh, binibig sa intangible personal property within that country. So, again na yung reciprocity rule example, kapag mayroong Filipino na may intangible personal properties Australia. So therefore, with regards to the Australian government, that Philippine uh, person or Philippine Filipino descendant is a non-resident alien in their country. Tapos hindi nila pinapatawa ng taxes yung intangible personal property ni Philippine resident doon, okay? So ni Filipino doon, hindi nila pinapatawan again ng estate taxes, okay? So ganun din yung gagawin ng Philippine government. The reciprocal, okay, from the word reciprocal or the reciprocity rule. Ayan. Now, so we're done now with the uh, gross estate. Okay? What forms part of the gross estate of a resident citizen, decedent, and a non-resident uh, alien? So additional, no, for a non-resident alien, of course, yung mga tangible, personal, and real property ni non-resident alien decedent dito sa Pilipinas, still uh, part yun ng gross estate niya. And additionally, yung mga intangible, personal property within also the Philippines, still following the reciprocity rule. Since alam na natin kung ano-ano yung uh, pwede, i, uh, uh, what are those that form part of the gross estate? Okay. Let's now discuss how to value the gross estate or those items okay, that will form part of the gross estate. In general, gross estate shall be valued at its fair value or fair market value at the time of the decedent's death. So whatever is the fair market value of that property at the time of the decedent's death, yun yung value niya na i-include mo sa gross estate. Or real properties. Okay, but for real properties, okay, uh, valued whichever is higher between Fair market value or zonal value. Now, for kapag may real property si decedent, uh, the the value you know, that will be included in the gross estate will be the uh, the higher or whichever is higher between the fair market value or the zonal value. Kapag mas malaki si zonal value, then si zonal value yung magiging or magre reflect sa kanyang gross estate. Otherwise, si fair market value. For personal property naman, okay. So kapag recently acquired yung personal property or kapag bago lang inacquire ni, ni decedent yung personal property, the value at acquisition cost or the purchase price. Kapag previously acquired properties naman, then the fair market value at the time of death. So kapag matagal na sa kanya yung personal property na yun, then the value will be that of a fair market value at the time of death. Okay, for use of rock, no? in accordance, kapag mayroon tayong tinatawag na use of rock, when you say use of rock, ito lang yung possession yun ng benefit. 
baga benefit not the not the property but the fruits of the property kapag siya yung nakaka-benefit or si decedent yung nakaka-benefit ng fruits no of the property then that is called to be a use of fractuary so yung value niya would be based on or in accordance with the latest basic mortality or standard standard mortality table to be approved by the Secretary of Finance upon recommendation of the Insurance Commissioner. Kapag yung uh, may shares of stock naman siya class, okay, the value of which, no, that will form part of the gross estate is depende siya. Okay. So kapag yung shares of stock is traded in the local stock exchange, so for example, trade, traded just a Philippine stock exchange market, okay, so the value would be the uh, fair market value or the quotation no or the quotation price or the price of the share upon his death in the market pero kapag wala namang available na price ng shares niya upon his death then the uh, mean okay, between the highest and lowest quotations nearest the date of death so again if hindi available si quotation no at the time of his death then kunin mo si highest at saka lowest quotation nearest the date of the death no the mean of which so uh, that's uh, th that would be the lowest price plus the highest price divided by 2 that's the mean okay? nearest the date of his death kapag hindi naman traded sa local stock exchange depende kapag common shares yun the book value okay Kapag preferred shares naman, the, the, the amount no, that will reflect in the gross estate will be the par value of the preferred shares. Now, let's talk about situs of property okay? or the situation or where does the property situated. Okay? So, as a general rule, the situs of real property is the place or country where it is situated. So, again, kapag general rule yan, Yung value daw ng real property is the place or country where it is situated. Kung saan siya nakalagay. Okay? Kapag real property. Kapag nasa Pilipinas, yung real property na yun, edi nasa, yung situs niya is within the Philippines. Okay? Generally, the situs of tangible personal property is the place or country where, uh, where such no, is actually located at the time of the decedent's death. So, yung when it comes to personal property naman, yung situs niya is the place where such personal property is located at the time of the decedent's death. So kapag nasa Australia, yung sasakyan ni, ni decedent, yung situs niyan is Australia. At uh, uh, kumbaga, kapag at uh, the time of the death of the decedent, yung sasakyan niya is nasa Australia, e yung situs niya is in Australia. Kapag yung sasakyan naman niya is nandito sa Pilipinas at the time of his death, then the situs of that car being a per tangible personal property will be within the Philippines. Now, as a general rule, the situs of intangible, let's talk naman sa intangible personal property, okay, is the domicile or residence of the owner. So kung saan nakatira si owner, okay, Doon din yung situs ng intangible personal property mo as a general rule. General rule pa yan. However, this rule may not control when the property has in fact a situs elsewhere. So kapag yung property na yun or yung intangible personal property na yun has situs elsewhere, then you will disregard the general rule. Okay? So in addition to the ones already enumerated, the following is uh, tests of situs apply. So, yung accounts receivable, kapag may accounts receivable si decedent, yung situs nun is the residence of the debtor. So, kung saan nakatira si debtor ni decedent. Ayan. That is the situs of accounts receivable. For bank deposit naman, allocation of the depository bank. Ayan. So, kung saan yung depository bank. Not the home office of the bank. Kung baga, kung nasa branch niya, let's say, uh, BDO Unibank okay? kapag nag-deposit siya sa BDO Unibank na dito sa Pilipinas eh di yung situs ng bank deposit is dito sa Pilipinas kapag nakadeposit naman yung pera niya sa BDO Unibank na nasa USA then the situs of the bank deposit would be in the USA kasi nandoon yung depository bank copyrights naman trademark, patent, and franchise okay? 
place or country where the intangible is used or exercised. So, kung saan ginagamit or in-exercise itong mga copyright, trademark, patent, and franchise, doon din yung CITOS niya. Okay? So, let's illustrate okay, illustration on CITOS and uh, the gross estate. Okay, ito yun. So, Miss uh, Nila Banes, no? single, died leaving the following property. So, single daw siya. So, wala siyang kahati sa kanyang mga property. Lahat ng kanyang property is sa kanya. Iba kasi class kapag married. Kapag married kasi, may mga properties na conjugal. Okay, but, uh, this discussion, no? uh, for purposes of this discussion or the coverage of your first exam will just be, or we will just focus on a single decedent or unmarried decedent. So, meaning, lahat ng property niya is sa kanya. Okay, wala siyang kahate. Now, we have to evaluate so, these properties, no? Whether this property ba is within or outside or without the Philippines. Itong mga properties na ito. Now, we are required after, after evaluating kung within or without ba itong mga properties na ito, we are required uh, to compute the gross estate of Miss Banes, okay? If Miss Banes died as a or am Filipino residing in the Philippines. So what if daw si Miss Banes is a Filipino residing in the Philippines? So how much is her gross estate? How much is her gross estate naman kapag Filipino residing in Australia siya? Kapag Australian siya residing in the Philippines. Kapag Australian siya residing in the Australia no, with reciprocity. And kapag Australian siya residing in China. Okay? So, let's compute. But again, no, let's uh, determine first whether this property or the situs of this property is within or without the Philippines. So, ito yun. Okay? So, ito yung properties niya. Ito yung values no, ng kanyang mga properties. And let's also classify or identify whether that property is tangible or intangible and the situs ayan, within or without the Philippines. So let's start off no, with the house and lot in the Philippines. So very clear that the house and lot in the Philippines is tangible and kasi nasa Pilipinas yan, that's within yung situs niya. Now, house and lot in Australia. Okay? House and lot, again, tangible. Pero without the Philippines. Next is building no, and land on which it stands eh, in, on Quezon City, Philippines. So meron daw siyang building and land uh, na nasa Quezon City. Then again, tangible yon and the situs is within. Next is trees, plants, no, growing fruits and land on which they are planted in Quezon. Ayan. So ito daw is nasa Quezon. Sa Quezon daw ito, yung mga trees, plants, at saka growing fruits niya and land. Okay? So, it is clear the tangible yon and within. Next, fish pond in Marilao, Bulacan. So, that is tangible and within yung situs. Now, next, car in the Philippines. Siyempre, that is what? That is uh, tangible personal property. Kasi nasa Pilipinas yan, that's within. Next, a uh, van in Australia, tangible, personal property yan. But because nasa Australia, kaya without. Yan, without yan. Next is uh, appliances, no? In house and lot uh, in the Philippines. So, tangible, personal property, tangible yan. Within. Ayan. Next is appliances, in house and lot in Australia. So, meron din siyang appliances, house and lot niya sa Australia. Tangible pa rin yan. But since in Australia yan, nasa Australia, kaya without. Okay? Jewelry in the Philippines, syempre, personal property, tangible within. Kasi nasa Pilipinas. Uh, jewelry in China, tangible without. Bank deposit in Beijing, China, okay? Eh? Intangible kasi bank deposits are intangible pro personal property. Nasa China kaya intangible without. Bank deposit uh, at BPI Bank, Ayala Avenue, Makati City. Intangible 
within. Kasi nasa Makati yung depository bank. Notes receivable, debtor residing in the Philippines. So, yung mga receivables, di ba, the situs of which is the place no or the residence of the debtor. So, bak kasi yung debtor, or dahil yung debtor nasa Pilipinas, kaya within yun siya. And of course, intangible. Accounts receivable, debtor residing in Sydney, Australia. So, intangible pa rin siya, pero yung debtor nasa Sydney, Australia man, kaya without. Copyright, okay? Exercised in the Philippines. Ayan, intangible kasi naka-exercise siya in the Philippines or it is exercised in the Philippines, kaya within. Trademark used in Australia. So, yung tra trademark, intangible yun because it is used in Australia, kaya without. So, as your patent na in-exercise sa China, that's intangible, intangible and without. Franchise, no, used in the Philippines, so of course, intangible and within. Kasi it is used in the Philippines. ABS bin certificate of stock kept uh, safe in Australia. Now, yung stock or yung share certificate is of course intangible personal property yun. Now, you may be confused kasi yung, yung stock certificate niya is uh, kept in China, uh, in Australia. So kahit nasa Australia yon yung yung stock certificate niya pero yung issuer is ABCBN a domestic corporation still within yung situs niya of course intangible kasi nga again the issuing corporation is a domestic corporation Emeralco certificate of stocks kept safe in the Philippines so very clear intangible uh, within Next is treasury bonds issued by Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. So the issuing institution is a domestic one, Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, kaya within. Of course, uh, intangible. Foreign shares naman, 80% business in the Philippines. So of course, yung shares, again, intangible. Pero dahil yung issuer is foreign shares, tapos 80% lang yung business nila in the Philippines, kaya without siya. Kailan siya magiging within kapag yung business nila in the Philippines is 85%. Magiging within siya. Because in this case, 80% kaya without siya. Or outside the Philippines yung situs niya. Next is obligations issued by foreign corporations with no business situs in the Philippines. So, klarong-klaro, intangible without. Kasi that the issuing foreign corporation has no business situs in the Philippines. Next is foreign bonds no, with business situs in the Philippines. Ayan, the issuer of the bond is a foreign corporation. Pero may business situs sa Pilipinas, kaya yung situs is within. Of course, intangible pa rin yun. Business right no, in a corporation established in Macau, China. So may right siya sa isang negosyo sa China. Yung right na yun is intangible, pero nasa Macau, China, kaya without yung situs niya. And investment in partnership established in the Philippines. Ayan, very clear, intangible. And yung partnership nandito sa Pilipinas, kaya within. Last two, okay, foreign shares, 90% business in the Philippines. So, ito na yon yung shares, may shares siya sa foreign corporation. Pero yung uh, foreign corporation na yon has 90% business in the Philippines. So, above 85%, kaya the situs is within. And lastly, uh, interest no in an industry established in Brisbane, uh, Brisbane Australia, na established sa Brisbane Australia, without a uh, business situs in the Philippines, and the business of which is not eighty five percent, kaya uh, without yung situs niya, and of course intangible. Now, yeah, because we're done no, uh, identifying each property as tangible or intangible. And the situs as within or without. Okay? We are now asked to compute the gross estate of the decedent okay? of Miss Banas. Yeah? Magkano ba yung gross estate niya kapag siya ay Filipino residing in the Philippines? Kapag siya ay Filipino residing in Australia? Kapag siya ay Australian residing in the Philippines? Kapag siya ay Australian residing in Australia? No? With reciprocity. And kapag Australian siya residing in China. Ayan. So, 
again, okay, the inclusion of the property uh, as part of the gross estate is, of course, you have to identify first what type of decedent ba siya. Kapag resident or citizen, decedent siya, lahat ng properties niya, tangible or intangible, within or without the Philippines. Kapag uh, non-resident alien naman yung decedent, okay, only those properties within the Philippines. Okay? Lahat ng properties niya, lahat ng tangible, personal, or real properties niya within the Philippines will form part of the gross estate. At yung intangible personal property within the Philippines na without reciprocity, it will form part of his uh, gross estate. Kapag with reciprocity naman, only those properties na tangible properties. Okay? Kasi kapag with reciprocity or reciprocity rule applies, okay, hindi tinatax natin or dito sa Pilipinas yung intangible personal property niya. Okay? So let's compute first no the gross estate of the decedent kapag siya ay Filipino residing in the Philippines. So kapag Filipino siya residing in the Philippines, meaning resident citizen siya. So kapag resident citizen, lahat ng properties niya tangible or intangible within or without. Kaya i-add mo lang lahat ng properties niya, okay, the gross estate would be 53,975,000. Uh, Kasi nga, resident siya at saka citizen din. Now, kapag Filipino siya residing in Australia, what do you mean by this one? It means that Filipino residing in Australia. So, the type of decedent is a non-resident citizen. Non-resident siya kasi nakatira siya sa Australia pero Filipino man siya, therefore citizen siya. So, the same rule sa number one, okay? kapag citizen ka lang, kahit na hindi ka resident, still, lahat ng properties mo, intangible or intangible, situs, within or without, it will form part of your gross estate. Kaya, add mo lang lahat, 53,975,000. Number three, okay? Number three, what if daw, yung decedent is Australian residing in the Philippines? So, if uh, someone is a is not a citizen kasi Australian siya so hindi siya citizen pero he is residing in the Philippines therefore uh, resident siya so the same rule kapag resident yung ano yung decedent kahit hindi siya citizen then uh, all of his properties intangible or tangible and within or without yung situs will form part of his or her a gross estate. So in this case, add mo rin lahat. Okay, that's uh, still 53,975,000. Yung gross uh, estate niya. Now, number four. What if yung namatay or yung decedent is Australian residing in Australia with reciprocity? So ito na yon. So Australian siya, so hindi siya citizen. And residing in Australia, non, uh, hindi din siya resident. Therefore, hindi siya citizen, hindi din siya uh, resident. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya, non-resident alien. So dahil non-resident alien siya, only those properties within the Philippines. Okay? So lahat ng kanyang, uh, may rule yan siya, di ba? Okay? Kailangan mo i-determine whether the reciprocity rule applies or not. So in this case, since with reciprocity, therefore, the reciprocity rule applies. Okay? So again, kapag with reciprocity yon, uh, the gross estate of the non-resident alien will only be those tangible, per, uh, tangible personal or real property within the Philippines. So hindi mo na i-add si intangible uh, personal property niya within the Philippines. Again, kapag uh, non-resident alien, then with reciprocity, what forms part of the gross estate will only be those tangible, real, or personal property within the Philippines. All intangible personal property is not included. Kaya yung gross estate niya dito is eto lang. Yung mga tangible properties within. Ayan, kasi with reciprocity niya. So ano-ano ba yon? Eto yon. House and lot in the Philippines. Ayan. 
a building to trees na nandito sa Pilipinas, plants, growing fruits, fish pond sa Pilipinas, car sa Pilipinas, ayan. Van in Australia, of course not kasi without yan. Uh, appliances, no? Sa house and lot niya sa Pilipinas, jewelry niya dito sa Pilipinas, okay? Yeah, yun lang yung part ng gross estate niya. Lahat ng intangible uh, personal property niya, hindi na natin i-analyze kasi nga, uh, i-analyze whether included ba or not kasi nga, with reciprocity naman. So, lahat ng intangible personal property is not included in her gross estate. So, pag total mo yun, okay, total mo yung mga tangible property within, okay, so, the total of which will, will be 15,000, 15,300,000 naman. Now, what if Australian siya, yung decedent, residing in China. So, dapat kasi, yung reciprocity rule is that you're a resident and citizen of a one foreign country. In this case, although citizen siya sa, sa Australia, pero nakatira siya sa China, so hindi mag-apply si reciprocity rule dito. Okay? Dahil hindi nag-apply si uh, kay dahil walang reciprocity or without reciprocity siya, then, yung mag-form ng gross estate niya ay ano-ano? Lahat ng tangible properties dito sa Pilipinas and lahat ng intangible property dito sa Pilipinas. So, to compute, okay? So, eto yon Una, you have the uh, tangible properties na muna within the Philippines. House and that in the Philippines. Ayan. Kasali yan. Buildings and land. Ayan. Trees. Trees, plants, uh, growing fruits in the Philippines, part yan kasi tangible property yan within. Fish pond in Manila, Bulacan, car in the Philippines, part yun. Uh, appliances no sa house and lot niya dito sa Pilipinas. And jewelry also in the Philippines. Okay? So, yun yung mga tangible property within. Kasi within sila, ang tangible property, part siya ng gross estate. Now, dahil walang reciprocity rule or dahil hindi nag apply si... Dahil hindi nag apply si reciprocity rule ngayon, okay, so we'll have to uh, add to the gross estate of the non-resident alien those intangible properties within the Philippines. So ano-ano yun? Ito, bank deposit no, sa BPI dito sa Pilipinas. Notes receivable na yung debtor is nasa Pilipinas. Ayan. Uh, copyrights na nasa Pilipinas. Okay? And ano pa? Franchise no, na used in the Philippines, ABS-CBN certificate, Meralco certificate, treasury bonds issued by the Banko Central. Ayan. Okay, what else? The foreign bonds no, with business situs in the Philippines, na mga within. And the investment in partnership established in the Philippines and foreign shares na 90% of the business is within the Philippines. So, ito, ito yung part ng kanyang gross estate. Again, ano, ano yun? lahat ng tangible properties within the Philippines at lahat ng intangible uh, properties within the Philippines will form part of the gross estate of a non-resident alien without reciprocity. Okay? To sum them up, that's equal to 27,950,000. So, yun yung mga gross uh, estate ng decedent, okay? in the following cases. Okay? Pag ito yung uh, mga cases. Okay? So, that is the rule okay? no, on the computation of the gross estate okay? of a resident citizen decedent or a non-resident uh, alien with reciprocity and without reciprocity. Now, let's talk naman no, about the exemptions and exclusions from gross estate. So, ano-ano ba yung mga property na hindi kasali sa gross estate ng decedent? Okay, under Section 85 and 86 of the NIRC, ito yon Capital or exclusive property of the surviving spouse. So, kapag yung decedent is married, hindi magiging part ng gross estate ni decedent yung uh, exclusive property ni spouse or ng kanyang uh, wife or surviving wife or surviving husband. 
properties outside the Philippines of a non-resident alien. So, uh, yun yung diniscuss natin kanina, yung mga properties na outside the Philippines, yung, stat, yung situs niya, tapos yung decedent is non-resident alien. Intangible personal property of a non-resident alien in the Philippines when the rule of reciprocity applies. Ayan. So, under Section 87 naman, ito yung mga merger of use of fract in the owner of the naked title. So, kapag use of fractuary ka lang or yung benefit lang yung nire-receive mo, okay, yung title or yung uh, property na nagpo-produce ng uh, benefit na yun, okay, syempre, yung property na hindi sa yun, okay, Kaya, hindi yun part ng gross estate mo. Yung property. Okay? Transmission or delivery of the inheritance or legacy of the fiduciary year or legacy to the fide commissary. So, kapag yung decedent or kapag yung uh, real owner ng property, uh, tinransfer niya kay fiduciary or pina, pina, uh, tinransfer niya yung possession ng property kay fiduciary year, telling the fiduciary heir na ibigay mo yan sa fide commissary or yung ultimate uh, na magiging owner ng property, then such property will not form part of the gross estate of the fiduciary, fiduciary heir. Ayan. Transmission of from the first year legacy or donee in favor of another beneficiary in accordance with the will of the uh, predecessor. So kahit na si legacy Nasa kanya yung personal property at saka si Donnie, okay? Nasa kanya yung personal property pero sabi sa kanila is ibigay nyo yan sa, sa kanya or sa beneficiary na gusto ni or na pinili at the will of the predecessor. Then still, that property will not form uh, part of the gross estate of the first tier, the legacy or the Donnie. Okay, all bequest devices, legacies, or transfer to social welfares. So, lahat ng mga transfers to social welfares, cultural and charitable uh, institutions, no, provided na no part of the net income of said institution in your to the benefit of any individual. So, magiging exempted lang yung, or magiging exclusion lang siya sa gross estate, yung binigay yung mga bequest devices or legacies sa mga charitable social welfare and uh, charitable institutions kapag yung mga institution na yun is yung net income nila hindi nag i sa uh, benefit ng isang tao lamang or not more than 30% of such transfers shall be used for administrative purposes. So dapat yung binigay ni decedent during his lifetime okay, or the, 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 uh, by ano based sa will ni decedent dapat yung not more than 30% of that is used no, for administrative purposes in order for that transfer to be excluded from the gross estate of the decedent. Now, under special laws naman, so may mga exempted din tayo na properties no, under or according to special laws. Ano-ano yun? Okay. So, proceeds of life insurance no, sa mga members ng GSIS. Benefits received by members from SSS by reason of death. Okay. Amounts received from Philippine and United States government for war damages. Okay. Amounts received from United States Veteran Administration. Retirement benefits of officers, employees of a private firm. Uh, sabi ng RA4917 uh, provided they are included in the gross estate. And Payment from a Philippine and U.S. government to the legal ears of deceased of World War II veterans and deceased no, civilian for supply service uh, furnished to the U.S. and Philippine Army. So, ito yung mga items or ito yung mga uh, exclusive or in, uh, ex excluded, no? Yung mga properties na excluded sa gross estate ng decedent, okay? according to or based on special laws. Okay, that's it for uh, this video. No? The rules in computing the gross estate of a resident or citizen decedent and a non-resident alien decedent. Peace.